Good morning, modern steaders. Waiting for UPS to come today. We are getting a delivery of bumblebees, guys, for the greenhouse. That's all I'm gonna say at this point. I don't wanna spoil it too much, but I am excited to get the bumblebees here in the greenhouse. We had a lot of viewers commenting about bumblebees for the greenhouse, so I started researching it, and it's gonna make a great addition for the homestead. I'm excited. <sighs> but that's all, I don't wanna give away any more of it right yet, so we'll wait. The UPS should be here at some point. Uh, the meat birds and the turkeys are hungry this morning. They are doing amazing. We've been having a lot of people asking us about free ranging our chickens and turkeys and not in chicken tractors. The reason they're in chicken tractors is we want to keep them safe from predators. We want to be able to eat them. We don't want to be feeding the predators. But we might be trying to come up with something. I don't know if we'll do get in time for it this year for the next batch of meat birds. But it'd be nice to be able to free range them in the bigger part of the pasture somehow. I'm trying to think of something that'll protect them from the predators all the time because meat birds, when they get bigger, they're not that active. They can't climb ramps and get in and out of stuff. So I'm trying to think of some ideas to do that. If you guys have any, leave it in the comments down below. One of the reasons I really like having them in chicken tractors is you get to move them every day to fresh greens. And man, they just love it. It's nice and clean from every morning. The reason I like to try free ranging them is, is we've been having a huge amount of grasshoppers this year outing the pasture. And if they're free ranging, they can go and get the grasshoppers all day long. But they would lose always having a clean spot because we'd only move this big pasture fence once a week so they could roam it and poo everywhere. So it's a toss up. Do you want to give your chickens fresh grass every day? Or do you want to be able to eat grasshoppers all day long? I don't know which one's better. That batch of meat birds are growing nicely. I can't wait to see what their average weight is on harvest day. Good morning, ladies. You hungry this morning? Give you a little bit of grain over here so they'll stay. And then we're gonna come over here and put the rest in their dish. There you go. Hey, where are the black copper moran chicks? I don't see them anywhere yet this morning. I'll have to keep an eye out for them. Usually they're over here at the pig pasture eating with the pigs in the morning. Hmm. That's not a good sign. It's supposed to rain today, but I'm okay with that because we got our sauna tubes full of concrete, so we don't gotta worry about anything getting washed out. Oh, hey, look at this. Good morning, chicken. What's the matter? Are you too big? You can't fit through the fence holes now? So you can't come visit the pigs this easy? I think that's the issue. They grew overnight. They can't sneak through that little fence. Come on in. Looks like you're gonna have to train some squash to go back into the garden before the boys get some butternut or buttercup squashes. Yeah. I saw it too. Uh, not super far, but we're gonna have to put it back to the fence. Are they gonna have a good snack? Yep. Good girl. Modern buttercup. Good girl. Oh, feel fun. Huh?
Our egg production's been down lately, so I can't wait until this batch of birds start laying eggs. It should be within the next month we should start getting eggs from them. The people that we sell eggs to have been kind of not getting as many lately because the NYC flock is slowing down. You guys got to come out this way. You can't make it through the fence anymore. You grew overnight, I guess. <laughs> See, they can't fit through. Come on and figure out. Gotta have her morning apple. Is that what she's doing? Yep. Did you find a good morning apple treat to have every day after milking? She likes to come over here and have an apple. Is that a good treat? Huh? Ivy, your mom's right here. Look. <laughs> Morning, Nora. Good morning. Want some? You want to eat right out of the scoop? Good morning, little pig. Where's Nora, huh? <laughs> Thought I was hearing something in here. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Huh? You trying to get some goat grain? Did you come all the way from NYC? I think you did. So UPS just showed up with our package to help us pollinate inside of our greenhouse. We ordered a hive of bumblebees. So we did our research. You hear them? Yeah, it sounds like a fan. Hear them? So I was doing some researching. I thought our honeybees would come into the greenhouse, but they won't. So then we started looking into mason bees and they don't like to come into greenhouses either because what happens is when mason bees or honey bees come into a greenhouse, they get blinded. A lot of our viewers were sending us information and saying, hey, you need to get bumblebees. Over here in Europe, most of our greenhouses pollinate their plants inside the greenhouse with bumblebees. So I looked it up and sure enough, you can go online and you can order them. So we have a bumblebee hive right here. So the other thing with honey bees is they communicate to each other, so if they find a good food source they'll say hey come over here everybody the clovers over here and like the vegetable plants it's not a great food source for them with bumblebees they don't do that they don't communicate so if they're in a, in a closed area like a greenhouse they'll stay in this area and they'll pollinate they won't go and leave to find better food so we need to get this opened up follow the directions and get our beehive set up inside the greenhouse yeah you excited Louise? yeah you want to see what bumblebee's beehive looks like? Yeah. 
The reason we need bees in our greenhouse is because our zucchini, summer squash, and cucumbers aren't getting pollinated that great. So instead of having to go around and hand pollinate them, the bumblebees will do that for us. Mostly the squash plants, and then we want the melons to make sure they get pollinated. Yeah, so I make found sure a that couple eggplant flowers. You're seeing some eggplants? Well, flowers. Yeah. I didn't know they were purple. Yeah, they're pretty cute, huh? They sound funny. Yeah, I know. It sounds like There's a, a bumblebee right there. Yeah. So we're going to stick them. I'm going to stick it right here. I'm not going to go on the edge because rain comes in. So I'm going to set it right here. Maybe I should go grab, I'm going to go grab a cinder block down below. Okay. We'll set it up on a cinder block. You got figured out? Uh, I know. Bam! I don't know if I should get two cinder blocks or one cinder block. I think one should be good. That'll be good. So bumblebees are supposed to be less aggressive than honeybees, but they will still sting you. They won't leave their stinger in you, but they're really only supposed to really care if anybody's around as if they're messing with their hive. Which? Which we're doing that right now. So we're just being cautious. So. And they just had a long ride. Who knows? They came from California overnight. So they might be a little hungry, hangry. Box, right? Yes. Oh, he's easy. got his butt sticking out right there. It'll probably be easier if I cut the side. Yeah. They're tiny. What's the next step? Carefully remove the inner plastic hive body from the outer cardboard hive. Okay. That's a cardboard hive. So now, I don't think you're supposed to open that cover yet. Okay. Carefully replace the inner plastic hive body into the outer cardboard hive, making sure to now expose the bait from the bee, hive, from the bee happy bag, fitting the proper place under plastic inner hive. Oh, yeah, there's one in there. I gotta oh, get out of my hood. We took the cap off right here from the wick, and that's their food sauce. That's their food source, and then under here, we're gonna put this hive back over it. And then the honeybees are in here. We're only gonna have it open once. So this is their hive, it's gonna be their home. Take a quick peek in here. That's their eggs and everything, and they have food down there that they can get to. Can you see it? And get food. So these eggs will hatch out, and they'll make more bees. So we'll keep this closed. If the hive gets really active, we can open up. So we have two holes right now. We're only going to have one. So I'm going to close this back up. I did get stung in the face. One got in my hood. There was a little crack, it crawled in, and it stung me right in my beard. So now we got bees right next to our summer squash and zucchini to pollinate them. I can't wait to see how much squash we end up getting now. I can't wait to see how many cucumbers and zucchini and summer squash we get now. I will say I was stung right here and it hurt for about two seconds and now it's gone and it doesn't even hurt as much as a regular bee sting so even if you do get stung it's not as bad as a regular bee. They don't have barbs on their stingers and they don't leave venom behind so it's just kind of like a, when you get hit with a shot and then it's gone pretty quickly. Ready? Hopefully the bumblebees have settled down a little bit so we can get in the greenhouse and 
take our cucumbers so we can get our first batch of pickles to preserve out of the greenhouse for this year. I'm looking forward to that. I don't see any bees attacking. Nope, I think they kind of chilled out. We're going to be going around and getting all the small and medium sized cucumbers to make pickles with today. And we have some really big cucumbers. We're going to save them for a relative. They're going to be making mustard pickles with those. That was just a bumblebee that cruised by us. Oh, I just wasn't even paying attention, but I go like, oh yeah, there's a buzz. Don't let Olivia see those. She might just try to eat them. Right. These are all coming from this one plant. We got four from that one plant. Oh, that Once we're all done cutting the cucumbers today, after we do our next step, I'm going to go around and I'm going to fertilize the cucumber bed again. So that way they have plenty of nitrogen to produce more cucumbers for us. That one's big. The watermelon's doing good. It's like <laughs> double in size. Yeah, it definitely has. So cute. Okay, next. You're getting lost back there in the cucumber jungle. Where are you? I can't see you. I see zucchini bread in my future. Oh, I broke the end. Hard to get down in here. Here. <laughs> you have to redo your hair after that what one. What the heck? This is hard work. <laughs> it looks like it. This excites me. I love zucchini. You gonna do some zucchini relish this year? I should. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can take this one. <laughs> <sighs> All right, you ready? Don't get in the way. I think we're just beating the rain. It's gonna start any time now. How much do you think this weighs? Bet you we got close to eight to ten pounds. That was almost a pounder. So that right there is enough to do six pints. Okay. So I'm gonna say we got, we probably got eight pounds, and that we can do twelve pints. Here's the last one. Seven pounds, four ounces. Nice. So we need to make a solution of one gallon water and six tablespoons salt. We're using Redmond's kosher salt. We're making the dill pickle spears from the ball canning and preserving book. We've never used this recipe before, but we're trying it out. All right, we'll let this sit till we're ready for it. 
We're gonna cut them to no longer than five inches and then we're gonna quarter them. This way when we're putting them in our pint sized jars, they fit perfectly. So if we've gotten this many cucumbers without the bumblebees, I wonder how our harvest is gonna look next time. Yeah. We're gonna awesome. be yeah, we're gonna be busy doing a lot of food preserving shortly. I also really, really like the cucumber salad that we did the other night. That was really good. Yeah. I think I had that. So it seems kind of weird to be putting a salt water solution on our cucumbers, but the reason you put the salt water brine is that it helps remove the excess water out of your cucumbers so they stay crispier when they're pickled and it gives them a better pickling flavor. So we're gonna put the salt water solution in our jars and let them sit for 24 hours. All right, hopefully I can do this without making a mess. Perfect. Now we're gonna cover them and let them sit for 24 hours, and then tomorrow we get to process them and make pickles. Yay! Pickles. But then we have to wait Aww. so they then taste like pickles. Aww. You should let them wait like a week before you open them up, because at first they don't really have much flavor. Right. Then you're like, oh, these are very good. Oh, you'll have to wait a week, Olivia. Can you handle it? I want to fertilize our cucumbers and what I've been using in here to fertilize our cucumbers, peppers, and tomatoes is this Neptune Harvest Organic Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer. It works really good, but it also smells. It's, it makes the greenhouse smell a little bit like you just went fishing for a day or two. So I like to do it after I harvest any vegetables if that by around harvesting time. So like the cucumbers, I didn't want to do it until after we had got them picked for pickling. You know how when you go fishing and you catch some fish and your hands smell? That's what this smells like. And you'll smell it for like 24 to 48 hours in the greenhouse. But I'll tell you what, you grow some amazing plants with this fertilizer and vegetables. The bumblebees are all over the place pollinating, which is awesome. Your flower garden's looking good. Are those lilies getting ready to? Yep. 
Yeah, they're getting ready to bloom. Oh, is yeah. it lilies? Nice. No, they're stargazers. Stargazer, Stargazer lilies. lilies. Yeah, that's what you used to always get me. That's what right. Around, the one that was right here would have bloomed, but then it, the blossom fell off. This no, one, Jacob's really Ladder. And, and that's a lupin. This is a lupin. Looking good. Look at this big, huge lamb deer. It's huge. Maverick Goose, what are you two up to? All right, ladies, let's head back to NYC. Yeah, well, they're old. All right, ladies. How many eggs did you lay us today? Nine. Ten. Hoping for a full dozen. A whole egg carton would be nice. Yeah, we'll have Two. Four. Six. Seven. Somebody's been loving laying in New York City. They've been doing this every day, so we got eight today. All right, ladies, so who hasn't been laying their eggs? You need to pick up your production. Where have you two been? Huh? You causing mischief? Hey, Hope. Nora. Willow. Oh, is that your sleeping spot there, Ivy? Yeah. You like hanging out on top of the hay feeder? Trying to fake them out? Yep. <laughs> it worked. Yep. What are you being so noisy about there, Zeke, huh? <laughs> Afternoon, mister. <laughs> See, did the black copper moran lay an egg today? No. Nope, no eggs. Your squash plants keep doing as good as they're doing. We're gonna have a bumper crop of winter squash. I know I keep looking. You get so, you just go so, look like this, look at this one. Hmm. Yep, that's a nice one. Another one right there. Yeah, awesome. Can't wait, and then I did see the string beans are starting to flower out. If you're looking for another fun video, I'm going to put a link to the video right here. We got 20,000 rhea bees on the homestead this year. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres. Bye.